the stars right across the sky put within my heart In the mother's womb, you answer every cry. I worship you. I worship you. Who are much brighter than the sun?
Hi everyone, welcome to SIBKL online service. My name is Joel and I'm one of the pastors in Workplace at the River, an SIBKL church plant. It's great to see so many of you joining us for service today. I believe that many of you are really eager to come to church physically, but thanks to technology, we can still be connected to each other online. So if you're joining us live, go ahead and drop a line in the chat group and tell us how you're doing. Share your name, share where you're joining us from, and our pastors and leaders would love to connect with you. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for every single person that's joining from their various homes, 
Lord, we pray that the room that they are sitting in will be filled with your presence. And Lord, all of us here will have a blessed service today. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to start the service soon, so let's watch SIBKL News. to understand the Lord said to me you know something in 2021 if you believe me if you build a firewall SIBKL will be a church without walls at the beginning of the year Pastor Chu issued a call at the watch night service to build a firewall now is the time to activate this prayer wall the national body of churches NECF has issued a call inviting all the churches to come together to fast and pray from the 18th of January to the 24th of January. I would like to invite you to join us on the prayer wall and commit to take up half hour slots at any day of the week that you wish. Of course, you can take up more than one day. And as we do that, I believe that God will begin to create, build a firewall around our homes, our families and our nation. I would also encourage you to fast between 18th of January to the 24th of January so that we join all our brothers and sisters in the Churches of God in Malaysia. The firewall, however, will continue right up to 21st February because the Lord showed us at the beginning of the year that if we begin to build this prayer wall from the 1st of January to the 21st of February, it would be exactly 52 days. Much like the walls of Nehemiah, when we pray on our firewalls, for 52 days, truly there will be a firewall that surrounds our city, our families, our churches and our nation and the glory of God will be within. So come join us. Accomplish is a, a community of business owners and professionals. We come together on a regular basis to journey life together and grow together. Well, I. Uh, attended Accomplish Camp in February this year uh, when I first came back from Indonesia. When I went to the camp, the thing that really um, caused me to rethink is how do we build people in order to build business rather than building business through people. This year, we bring you the True Success Conference in a blended learning style. Our speakers are from KBC, the Kingdom Business Community, a network with more than 15,000 members in Indonesia. Their stories from 16 years are real and they are so authentic. Our blended learning journey will give you three experiences. A learning personal to you at your own pace with direct access to the speakers. Interaction with other conference participants on the social platform in the app. And finally, at our Saturdays together, you will hear from our keynote speaker and interact within your small groups. So come, join us on this true success journey today. Are you engaged and thinking about getting married? Do you want to build strong foundations for a steadfast relationship? The pre-marriage course is designed to help couples invest in their relationship for a lasting marriage. The course will help couples to learn to communicate well as well as understand and appreciate the differences while preparing them for any potential challenges they may face in the future. For more info, visit the link on the screen. Places are limited to 10 couples only, so be sure to register soon.
one of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page.
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. You know, even as we come or we carry on this time of worship, I just want to bring a thought to you from Scripture. You know, I'm reminded of the story of the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. And in that story, the woman was gripped with desperation. The Bible says that she had a condition. She was bleeding for 12 years and she spent all her money on treatments and she was getting, the Bible says, worse and worse. She felt like, or it could have seemed like there was no solution for her. But yet, in Mark chapter 5, in the story, what happened was the woman reached out, she pushed through the crowd and she reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' cloak and she was healed. Just one touch. And I want to encourage you wherever you are right now to push past the distractions, to push past the unbelief, to push past even the bad reports or negative emotions, to just reach out to Him in this moment right now and just say, Lord, just one touch. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you have been through. But can we just have that desperate cry from the depths of our hearts and say, Lord, just one touch. Just one touch. Lord, I pray that as we reach out to you, arms raised high, even in our homes and wherever we are watching from, you will give us that just one touch. And Lord, we know that your presence is not confined to a building. Your presence is wherever your people desire and hunger for you. And Lord, we are looking to you this day. So to right now, Lord, we want to just stand in prayer for a few people. Lord, we want to pray for Elaine, who has lung cancer and stomach ulcers, God. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, will you heal her? Cancer, you have no place. Cancer, be gone. We push past all the bad reports and we ask for one touch for Elaine right now. Lord, we want to pray for Jillian as well who has been having suicidal and depressive thoughts. Lord, I say that right now you remove all those negative emotions and thought processes that is attached to her and you give her peace. You give her wholeness. You make her whole again. Just Not just in body, but in mind and in spirit as well. May your presence fill her. And Lord, we also pray for Brother Chen who is having nasal cancer. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name, may your spirit fall upon him. Heal him completely and restore him. May all cancer markers be gone. And wherever you are at home, if you need one touch from the Lord, whatever that you are going through. Now, that one touch, it can mean an instant reparation or transformation, but it could also be the start of a restorative process or healing that can take place in your life. So whatever you're going through, whether you're believing for a relational issue, a financial issue, a career issue, or even a direction issue, why don't you just reach out to the Lord right now and say, Lord, just one touch, just one touch. I want to hear from you. I want, I, I want to touch from heaven right now. Lord, you see all of the hands raised in their homes, in their rooms, in their offices, in their cars, wherever they are listening to this from. Lord, I pray that right now in Jesus' name, may your Holy Spirit fall upon them. Give them all that they need. Heal them, restore them, provide for them. Do what only you can do as we reach out to the one that we trust and that we look to in all seasons. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen and Amen. It is such a privilege and honour to come to you even in this time, to share the Word of God with you. Um, we are in our Overcoming series, and this series is going to stretch out for a couple of weeks into 
the month of February, from the month of January. And today, I'm here to pick up on the thought of overcoming together. Overcoming together. Could you turn to someone next to you and say, let's overcome together. Could you type it in the chat as well? Just say, hey, let's overcome together. Together, we will overcome. Before I get into the message, I want to bring a thought to you. Just something for us to think about. You're just saying, it goes this way. Wisdom is learning that life is full of trials and tensions. But maturity is accepting that it is part and parcel of life. Now, if you look at this statement, it's why, why I, I, I thought about this is because I was thinking the other day, everything that we pursue and everything that we do, everything that we make ourselves about is kind of like, if we are honest, we are trying to achieve, we're trying to escape pain, basically. We want to escape trials. We want to escape tension in our life. So that's why we try to get more money because we think that if we have more money, then we will have less problems. If we only had certain uh, amount of influence, if I had this amount of Instagram followers or if I had this position or this job or this car, whatever it is, if I studied hard enough, if I get good grace, if I become successful enough, then I will have less problems or less troubles in my life. Really, if we think about it, if we're honest with ourselves, that's really the driving, motivating factor and force in our lives. But how many of you know that that is actually far from the truth? You can be so successful and still go through trouble. You could, be, you could, have, thought that you could have achieved all that you thought that you set out and, and wanted to do, but yet you still find yourself struggling with things here and there. Or you could be coming out of a season of battles where you are just battling and wrestling with stuff. And the minute you thought that, wow, I've just, I can kind of like chill now and then suddenly another issue crops up and you, you're just going from one battle and one trial from one to another. But I've realized something that that is actually just part and parcel of life. You know, the troubles don't disappear. They actually come in different forms as we mature, as we go to through different levels and all that. In fact, Jesus himself said this in John 16, verse 33. What did he say? He said that, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. He did not say you might have trials and sorrows or you may have trials and sorrows. He said you will have trials and sorrows. And yet so many of us, especially those who have walked with God for many, many um, seasons and days now, we still get blindsided or surprised as to why is trouble coming upon me? Why is this pandemic? I don't know about you, but... There are days where I still wake up and I, I can't believe that I'm actually living in a pandemic. Any of you actually think that? It's like, what are the odds in a hundred... Uh, the, the last pandemic that occurred was a hundred years ago, more than a hundred years ago, and now we are living in one. And for many of us, we thought that the turn of the year, the year 2021 would be like a fresh start, a new beginning and all that. But... Um, Maybe for some of us, like from, especially for me, we're kind of hoping that it's actually not the 24th of January, but the 55th of December 2020, right? We just wish that this COVID thing, this quarantine, lockdown, whatever, all these words that are buzzing around would just go away. But yet we are still here. But the word of the Lord, the word from the Lord tells us that in this life, you will have trouble. You will have trials and you will have sorrows, but take heart. For I, Jesus, have overcome the world. My friends, trouble and tension and trials, it is part and parcel of life. And the minute we start to accept that, we can actually build on that and move on. Uh, you know, there's this saying as well, if you cannot 
trace his hand, you must trust his heart. That why God will allow certain things to happen, I don't have all the answers. And some of us may never have the answer why certain things happen. But we know, we know that God is faithful, God is true and God is alive and He has a plan even though we cannot see just yet. So because our church theme this year, powerful theme, is together we overcome. And I've kind of like just rephrased that for today's message as overcoming together. So I'm going to split my message into two parts. There is the overcoming component and there is the together component. You know, when the word overcoming, it suggests that there is something that we must overcome. There is something that we must conquer. There is something that we must get through. And I've categorized four kinds of trials that every one of us will experience at some point of our lives and sometimes all together as well or across one or two or two or three at the same time. The first one is this, the trial of calamity. The trial of calamity. And the trial of calamity is a loss, tragedy, you know, whatever unfortunate circumstances, unforeseen circumstances that can happen to us. And loss, you know, death. Uh, those of you who know me, a few couple of years ago, uh, my dad passed away. That was a huge trial, a huge loss for me. Sometimes the loss is not just in the form of a death of a person. It could be a loss of a job, a loss of a dream, or a loss of a relationship. Calamity comes and calamity happens. Disasters is all around us. Things happen. Stuff happens. And we have to go through these trials. The second trial that I can think of is this, the trial of change. The trials of change. You know, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says this, that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Everybody goes through change. When you are a young person going from kindergarten to primary school, primary school to secondary school, secondary school to college, college to university, university to working life, working life to married life, married life to parenthood. You go through changes all the time. And sometimes some of these changes can be extremely challenging. Some of these changes forces us to let go of things that we never thought we needed to let go of. And it forces us to adapt in ways that stretches us beyond our comfort level. And, you know, even for myself, um, uh, those of you who will know, right, I, I oversee the young people. So for many years, I ran a youth ministry called Narrow Street. And later on, you know, I was given the privilege to then birth a new college and university ministry called Society. And I thought that, hey, you know, because Narrow Street and Society, it's all under one pastor, one under, under one leadership Everything will go through smoothly, no problem. But even as I continue to lead the ministries forward, I find that I have to work through transitions. I always thought, you know, um, working in church, transitions is only if it's under a different leadership. But even within people, my own care, I have to, to walk people through having different changes, different challenges. And you know, talking to people who have gone overseas and all that to study. There's so many challenges and changes that we have to go through. Change is the only constant in life. When I got married, I had to change a lot of things. Go through a lot of changes. When I, got, when I became a father, many changes. So for many of us, we go through different changes. When we start a new job, when we, uh, even now, you know, going through this pandemic, we have to change the way we do our businesses or run our families or even our routines, our daily routines. And it's always changing. That is a form of trial as well. The third trial that we will experience in life is this, the trial of constraints. What do I mean by the trial of constraints? The trial of constraints is basically struggling with uncertainty. Don't, not knowing what to do. I, like many of us, I'm sure, actually appreciate certainty. I, I kind of want to know. 
I'm not the type of person, uh, I don't know whether you're like that, I'm not the kind of person where, you know, I can go, I can go, um, some of my friends are like this, they can go to a destination for holiday and they have no itinerary plan. They just, let's just go with the flow and see what happens, right? Uh, I kind of, I'm not super fixed on my plan, but I kind of want to know where we're going. So I like a little bit of idea of what's happening and all that. It's same for my life. I don't plan two, three, five, ten years ahead, but I do like to know where I'm going, what's going to happen and all that. But now we are living in a season where it's so hard to plan. And especially for us here in a worship ministry, because uh, those of you in a worship team, uh, those of you who lead ministries, churches, companies will know, right? It's so hard to plan because one minute we get threatened with a lockdown, next minute we, are, we can do stuff again, we can move freely again, next minute lockdown again, uh, we don't know what we can and cannot do and it's just so uncertain. Even for me personally, for, for those of you who again know me well, uh, I've been trying, you know, I've been trying to get to um, uh, uh, because my, my in-laws live abroad, been trying to ar- make arrangements to go and visit them because my father-in-law is not doing well and you know, we, we, we're kind of worried for how much time he has and all that and at one minute we, we could go, next minute we can't, then we can go again and we're not sure when it's going to happen. So there's so many different things. I, what kind of constraints are you living in? You may be in a situation where you feel stuck. You want to proceed, Maybe you're a student, your exams keep getting cancelled. Maybe you're a business person and you feel like you don't know how to go forward. Or maybe you're trying to plan things for your family, but everything just seems to be like going against you. The trial of constraints. And the fourth one is this, the trials of consequences. Now, let's be real for a moment. Sometimes the trouble that we are in is because of our own doing. It's not all the devil's doing, right? Sometimes we give the devil too much credit. We blame him for everything that happens in our lives, but at times it's actually due to our own negligence or foolishness if we can be real for a moment. You know, the Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. What is a wage? A wage is something that you are given based on what you deserve. And the truth is, because we have sin in our lives, we will make mistakes, We are prone to messing up. We are not flawless. Maybe some of us, we are living with the consequences of our actions and mistakes. A bad investment gone wrong or a misspoken word or a or broken promise leading to a breakdown in a relationship or poor judgment, whatever it is. Those of you who follow what happens in the evangelical church world will know that recently there were two very high profile cases involving a global church and global ministry. And now the church and the ministry, they are reeling from the consequences of their leaders and all that. And you see, that reminds me that the best of men are men at best. None of us are perfect. Not, no matter how anointed or spiritual we may appear to be, there are times where our sins and our mistakes will catch up to us. These are the trials. But how can we overcome these trials is the element of togetherness. And it is something that we don't actually talk about or we don't talk about enough and certainly something that we it is so crucial in this point of time. You know, for a couple of years ago, when we went on this whole emphasis on discipleship, I can't remember now, um, was it 2017 or was it 2018 where we started on this team, um, together we followed Jesus. And we talked about how discipleship is now going to be our emphasis. Not just being churchgoers, but Christ followers. Not just attending church, but actually modeling and following Jesus in our lives. And out of that, we also mentioned that discipleship is a process. It is a journey and not about the destination. None of us can actually say, I have arrived. I have arrived at the peak point of spirituality, of maturity. I know it all now. So there's this saying, right? It's not about the destination. It is about the journey. 
But let me add an element to that. And the company makes all the difference. Have you ever been on a road trip or a long car trip? You will know that how well or how pleasant a holiday or road trip is, is dependent on who is actually on the trip, who is in the car with you. And how many of you recognize that even sometimes if you go to a place where you have been many, many times, whether it's a um, thing about local destination, right? Penang, Ipoh, Malacca, the places that most Malaysians go to on, on trips. Even if you've been to one of those particular trips, like many, many times, if the company that goes along with you are enriching, you love them, you know, it, it, you, you get along well with them, it will make the trip so much more enjoyable and pleasant and you won't be thinking so much about the destination. Some of the fondest memories I have um, is actually, I remember when I was still a student, a cell leader in Australia, a couple of, I got a couple of my cell members and we went on a trip, we went hiking and we got lost and it was raining and all that and we were lost uh, but because I had them as company with me, that, was, that became, it was, it was stressful but after that, we had a good laugh about it and we, we enjoyed the fellowship and the community together. So my encouragement and my challenge to each and every one of us is that in this element of overcoming, we need to overcome or we can only overcome if we are together. Make no mistake about it. Community is key. Community is crucial. It is community is in fact spiritual. A lot of times we think that spiritual things is just doing very spiritual activities, like for example, Bible studies or worship or reading the or prayer. You know, we, we, we think that's very spiritual. Yes, they are. But when you relate to a fellow brother and sister in Christ or anybody, the way you conduct that relationship or the, or the way you relate to people, connect with people, that is spiritual as well. Think about it. In Genesis, when God created everything, everything was good. But the one thing He said that was not good is that it's not good for man to be alone. And God in Himself is a communal God. Three in one, one but three. God is a communal God and if we are created in His image, we are meant for community. No man is an island. None of us are meant to do this life alone. None of us can actually get by by ourselves. So I want to put this lovingly but even firmly to people who has this view. Some people have this view where, you know what, I don't need the church. I don't need the church because I just have God and God and me enough. I, I, can, I can pray by myself. I can grow by myself. Can I lovingly say to anybody or to, to you even if you believe this, that is actually unbiblical. Strong words coming from me, but I have proof. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 24, 25, says this, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let us not give up in the meeting together. Now, we can't meet physically like this, but there is still the digital space. I thank God for Google Hangouts, for Microsoft Teams, for Zoom, for Skype, if any of you use it, or if you're even more niche, WhatsApp video call or FaceTime, any of you who use this, thank God for technology. So before, that applies to not coming to church, but now, this still applies. Let us not grow tired in meeting together. As a pastor, I want to tell you, I want to be honest, this online thing isn't working for me either. Uh, don't talk about you getting discouraged. I'm so discouraged. I'm so tired of being on Zoom. I'm so tired of even right now speaking to an empty room. I wish there was actually people here that I could speak to. But I want to live by conviction and not by emotion. 
And I know the Bible tells us that when we stick together, there is power. Think about coals. You know coals when you do, if, you, if any of you are into barbecue, um, or if you, if you know how fireplace works, you have coals. Coals grow cold when they are separated. A coal can retain it, the heat that he has for a considerable amount of time. But even after that, before long, it will start to lose its heat and it will grow cold. It's the same for us as Christians. No matter how charged up or fired up or how conveyed, no matter how powerful an encounter that we had with God, if we don't stay in community, we will eventually grow cold. I want to challenge us, encourage us. Let's make community and emphasis. For those of you who have not been going to cell, your cell leader has been calling you to attend cell on Zoom, please get back into it. For those, for young people, get plugged into a, a youth group, Narrow Street Society, kids, you know, go to the kids ministry, whatever that it is. If, you, if you're watching on and you, you're part of SIB Care but you don't have a cell, please send us a message. Get connected because on, it's only in connection that we will find power. Community is key. You know, community brings two things, comfort and clarity. Community may not always bring clarity. Most of the time it can because when we come in a community, and I'll, say, I'll expand on that a little bit in a short while, but when we are in community, we learn from one another. But sometimes it's not about the clarity or the answers, but even the comfort, knowing that we don't have to go through things on our own knowing that we, we are not the only ones who go through certain things. So if I encourage us to get into community, three things will happen. The first thing is this, together we learn. Together we learn. You know, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says this, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. That is the value of, of small groups, cell groups, connect groups, whatever terminology you want to give it. It's not just getting together to do Bible study. It's getting together so that we can do life, that we can journey with one another. You know, when you do things in a community, it makes, all, it, makes it all the more rewarding and empowering. Those of us who know, who have hobbies, whatever hobby, whatever sport, whatever pastime you are in, when you do it with a group of people, you find that you learn more, you grow more, you tap on other people's expertise and experience and they can give you little tips and all that. And it's the same when we get together in church. We learn from different insights, from different perspectives, from different experiences that people had with God and in life and we can grow and we learn. And as we get into community, the second thing that happens to us is together we lean. And that's so powerful because Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12 says this, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Community brings comfort and together we can lean on one another. I don't know about you, but I recognize that no matter how gifted or how charismatic or how capable anybody is, you can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. Life is a team sport. Do you know that? Life is a team sport. Those of you who watch football will know this. Even a star player, now, now we talk, we're in the age of Lionel Messi, right? He's coming at Ro Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, these are key star players. For many, many years, they have been celebrated. Their names, their, their, their statistics are astounding and all that. But how many of you know, these fellas, no matter how great they are, they can't go against another 11 men. They will certainly lose. Football is like life. Life is like football. It is a team sport. 
You and I need one another. The church needs one another. In times like this, a weak government, if I dare, if I dare say, needs a strong church. A divided nation needs a united church that we can come together and we lean on one another. It's not just in the big things, it's in the, even in the small practical things. When you are connected to a community, we can help each other out in practical ways. So I want to encourage you. I want to urge you. Let's keep together. Let's stay together. Because together we learn, together we lean, and then together we leap. Together we will go to the next level. There's this saying, it's found in Deuteronomy 32 verse 30. It's quoted quite often where it says, one can chase uh, 1,000, but two can put to flight 10,000. And that is the power of unity coming together. Psalm 133 echoes this by saying how lovely it is when brothers and sisters come together in unity. You know, I think of it this way. I think of, I was, as I was preparing this point, I thought of a train. You know, a train, I, I'm thinking of a locomotive, big, big train. Not, a, not those high-speed bullet trains, but a big, big train. When it starts off, it's slow. It goes, you know, it's chugging along, it's chugging along. But as it goes along, it builds up speed. It will be going at a considerable pace. And even though, the, the, the locomotive train or whatever, it's not so powerful, not so advanced like a bullet train. But once it gets up to speed, it builds enough momentum. And as it continues and it's moving and it's moving and it's moving, anything that comes along its way, it will just bulldoze it and brush past it. Why? Because it has already gathered enough momentum and because of the you know, of all the, the of all that is carrying that togetherness. And I feel like that's what a church needs. That's what you and I need. That when we get into community, it will be messy. It will be troublesome. It will be slow at times even. Not very exciting. But as we gather together, as we come together, we will build that momentum. Then when we, when we are community, we can lend each other faith. We can stand like what we did at the beginning of this service or beginning of this message. We stand in prayer with some, of pe- with some people. When we are losing faith, we can lend faith to someone else or someone else can lend us our faith. We have that momentum, that momentum of togetherness. And I want to implore us, SIBK, our church family, let's stick together and we will go to the next level. We will overcome. I will end with this scripture. Romans chapter 8. Most of us will know and be familiar with this scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. It says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Some versions say more than overcomers through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height nor depth, or anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is of Christ Jesus our Lord. It says here, in all these things, verse 37, we are more than conquerors, more than overcomers. The key word there is we. Together, all of us, we are the body of Christ a force to be reckoned with, a team that should not be written off. The comeback kings, if I dare say so. That's who we are. No matter what is happening around the world today, can I encourage you and assure you that if you plug yourself into community, if you stay rooted in the church of Christ, you are on the winning team 
and you are in the winning side. Amen. Amen. Touch someone next to you and say, together we overcome. Light out the chat and say, we will overcome together. Amen. Amen. Let's close this time by worshipping God with this song. Come on, let's worship Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time that we can gather, not in body, but most certainly in spirit, to hear your word, to worship you. Lord, I pray that whatever that every all of us are going through, I pray that you send us the right people to journey with us. Lord, that we will appreciate our friends, our family who has been there with us through thick and thin. May we not... May we not underestimate them or may we not neglect them, but may we cherish and appreciate them indeed as gifts from you. We thank you, Lord, for this time 
And I just want to pray that you strengthen all the cells, all the ministries, all the little communities that we have, all the families that are watching on. You strengthen them. Give them unity. I speak unity. I speak peace. And I speak cohesiveness that indeed we will move as one not just as individuals but as units wherever that you have placed us and called us to be we thank you lord we worship you in jesus name we pray amen amen hey thank you so much for tuning in if you need any form of prayer i want to invite you to join us at this link there'll be a team there reaching out to pray with you pray for you and I also want to just give us one final word of encouragement or uh, challenge. If you are not connected, get connected. If you have children who are not connected to anything, get them fitted in into the right ministry. If you have brothers, sisters, friends, neighbours who you know are tuning into church but they are not part of any cell or ministry, get them plugged in, right? Check, reach out to us go to our website we have many opportunities for us to stay connected I don't know what the future holds I, you know, it's bleak it, the reports are not great but what I do know is that the church of God will prevail and we will prevail together I know Christ is still in charge and I know the church is still alive so get connected join the team you are on the winning side that's all from me thank you for tuning in God bless you have a great week ahead. We're praying for you. And if you need any help, reach out to us. God bless you. Take care. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like to be prayed for, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. If you would like to give, you can go to this giving link and all the giving details will be there for you. Thank you for sowing into God's kingdom this season. You are a blessing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay connected for the latest content. Follow us on our social media at SIBKL Church. Have a good weekend. God bless.
value of my life I worship you You who formed the child In the mother's womb Answer every cry Not a day too soon I worship you I worship you Who are much brighter than the sun Bigger than the universe Let all creation come And worship Stars right across the sky, put within my heart the value of my love. Oh, I worship you. You form the child in the mother's womb. You answer.
mysteries of love I behold in your eyes You're the wisdom that fashioned the earth and the skies And despite your perfect Came all my sin. Now you have my affection and all that's within. I surrender my crown 